Hey everybody and welcome to a youthful Wild Ride with Stevo. We've got Mod Sun. His new album God Save the Teen is just out. His best friend Machine Gun Kelly just made a movie with him. They they wrote it together. He, he's engaged to Avril Lavigne. He's got a very fresh and youthful view of the world. And man, at the end, the last like half hour is just straight crazy talking about addiction and alcoholism and that part is juicier than hell do not miss the last half hour of this podcast let's get into it yeah okay. buddy yeah dude apologies for the delay the I fuck you talking about you're a minute kidding. early yeah that's fucking late as fuck you're a minute early buddy <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> Yeah, dude. I love you, bro. <laughs> dude, love you too, man. It's so good to see you again. We met briefly one time, but that's it. That's right. Okay. <clears throat> that says two. I'm going to fucking run with it. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Mod Sun. I'm here. I made it on my favorite podcast in the world. I love you, dude. <laughs> dude. I uh, have never had anybody, celebrity or non-celebrity alike, express to me the kind of passion for this podcast as you have. It's not a joke when I say it. I was just telling him I spent so much time in my car because I live like really deep in Malibu. It takes an hour and a half to get anywhere. Um, and this is like all I listen to, bro. Dude, I really it's, do. It's I've epic, probably man. seen, I mean, I know you have like diehard viewers. But I'm one of them, and I've probably seen close to all the episodes, dude, including the last one that you just dropped. Uh, the Death Row guy. Yeah. Yeah. Heavy. It's heavy. Heavy, It's crazy dude. how the, the comments on our Death Row inmate podcast, I, I saw literally like one. They're like, how dare accident. you give this guy a platform? <laughs> right. yeah. yeah. He committed a crime 600 years ago. Yeah. Right. They're like, this guy gets to be on a celebrity podcast, but his victim's still six feet under, and that's not right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, man. I mean, granted, you know, he did murder somebody. He did. But he also was 16, and it's like... He was 17. He was 17, and if somebody's going to get another chance, it's like, But, dude, you know when? what? You know what's crazy is that that podcast got uh, dinged by YouTube as well. For what? It's, uh, you know, not uh, suitable for ads. So if you don't know what we're talking about, it's because you're probably on YouTube and they don't want you to see it. So look up really? Death Row Inmate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was really interesting. Well, thank honestly. you, man. Thank you. And that's like what's really cool about your podcast is that you do stuff like that. Well, it's the first time. I know you're you're passionate about that. Yeah. You know? Dude, I love it. Yeah. I, I super love it. I and mean, you kind of got me into all that. Dude, bro. Well, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, su I really genuinely appreciated when you, when you told me that. We might as well I explain. We were at... Uh, what is it? It was a, a premiere, an advanced screening yeah. for uh, the movie that you wrote. Yeah. And, uh, and, and MGK directed it. Yeah, me, me and me and Kels. Me, yeah, me Kels. and Yeah, me and Kels directed it. Colson Baker. Colson Baker, which I have never called him that in my entire life. Good. I can't call him <laughs> Colson, dude. What do you call him, Kels? Kels, dude, yes. We've known each other for like 12 years, and like I didn't even know he had a first name. Until like three years ago, right? Yeah, okay. So well, he introduces him himself as Kel uh, Colson. I know. I was I like, know. Hi, nice to meet he you. He does like, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, he does now. It's yeah. like uh, he, he's uh, old Dwayne Johnson over here. Yeah, he's like all grown up now. <laughs> yeah, that was very proper. But I will never, I will never introduce myself. Just I, I go by Mod. That's it. Mod. Okay. I hate the name I was born with. What's your name you were born with? Oh, dude. Derek. <laughs> Derek? All right, it's not Derek. too bad. And it's, uh, the reason Darryl. I hated it, though, is because it's spelled D-E-R-E-K. And then all the time in school, though, the teacher would say Derek. And I'm like, there is no I-C-K in my name. I don't want to hear Ick every second. So I just uh, hated Ick my whole life. I hated right. Derek. We you always look more like a mod than a Derek. Thank you. It's <laughs> the greatest compliment, and we're done. Thank you, Wild Ride. That's a wrap, baby. We uh, used to always laugh, still do sometimes. We'd say, like, if, if a guy just is a disaster, does not have his act together, we'll say, what a Daryl. A Daryl? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, kind of like short for Daryl. Oh, you know yeah, any Okay, okay. Yeah, I and, do know Daryl. So and, least... and how do they act? <laughs> Bro, I, like I don't, a Daryl. Yeah, like a Daryl. <laughs> legit, legit, legit. It's, it's pretty funny if you think of it that way, like naming your kid Daryl. 
<laughs> Dude, I, well, I, no, I always think about that. What like a, a like a young kid named Gretchen. Like it's just, they're just so strange to name them that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so help me remember what was the name of that movie? Good morning. Good morning. And morning is spelled with a U. And we actually shot it coming up here, driving up this canyon. We actually shot it. The house that we shot it at is like blocks away from here. Right. So yeah. I was over here every day for a, like two months at. 5 a.m. And how did that movie perform? It was on Netflix. It is on Netflix. No, it's not on Netflix. Um, it's on uh, Amazon Prime. It just got added to American Airlines. Wow, and, cool. Uh, it's on a big iTunes. deal. Yeah. I mean, it was our, it was our first like real, real feature movie experience, you know? We right. shot a short film before that called um, Down Falls High, which was like a short film for Machine Gun Kelly's album, Tickets to My Downfall. Okay. That we made like kind of like a rock opera kind of thing, right? Uh -huh. um, and that did really well. So we wrote this script and uh, we were going, this was before that short film for the album came out. We wrote that script and we were going around town and me and Kels would show up into like these producers' offices and we would go back and forth reading the script in front of them, the whole thing, acting out each character. And uh, everyone was like, yo, we really like the script, but there's no way in hell we're gonna let you direct this. Like, you guys do not know what the fuck you're doing at all. Right. And, uh, and then the short film for his album came out and then some people saw that and they were like, all right, like maybe maybe we will let you do this. So we found a production company, um, David Ayer. Do you know David Ayer? I do not. Director, he did like Training Day, and, and uh, okay. he was involved in Suicide Squad. Just like a real, done a lot. Um, his production, hi, I love you. <laughs> his production company um, picked it up and was like, we're gonna let you guys do this. So it was our first time, and like, dude, I learned so much. And it was, uh, it was being uh, an artist, mainly, you know, music is my main vehicle. Right. Working on a movie was the closest thing I felt to working a real job since ninth grade. I, that, that, that checks out to me. It's Because, like, lot. you're waking up at the same time every day, early morning, long days. Dude, wait, homework. Sitting, I mean, pre-production, I'm in an office sitting behind a desk, nine to five. Yeah. And it was just like a crazy, it was a really crazy learning experience. Of, what was the budget for the movie? It was like three and a half mil. Wow, that's a lot. It's a lot, but in standards of movie, it's not like right, crazy. Right, right. Right. But um, we got really lucky. The cast is amazing in it, which we were like all friends with. And yeah. so they kind of like, out of the kindness of their heart, were like, all right, we'll support you, idiots that don't know what you're doing. And, right. Yeah. I mean, when I say that's a lot, you're right. In the terms of movies, that's nothing. Yeah, it's but, nothing. Right. But, but it's a lot of money. I mean, the movie business is like the highest stakes gambling. Is 100%. Really what it is. 100%, dude. And <clears throat> what people don't know when they hear like the how much money a movie brought in that half of that number goes to the movie theaters. Yeah. You're only starting out with half of it. Yeah. And then what whatever the budget was, forget about that because the budget is almost always less than what's called P&A, promotion and advertising. Right. They spend more on the billboards, the commercials, the trailers, than they do on the movie itself. Yeah. So, yeah. Can, can you explain that again? What, what did you say? Half of the budget goes to the movie theaters or half of the half income? Half of the income. Half so if you income. see it grows to 100 million, that means that all the movie theaters that it was at probably took 50. 50. If it goes to 100 million, then 50 million went to the movie theaters. And then... The other half, the other fifty million, went to uh, whatever the studio. Wow, there. I wonder what the profit is on that because I thought movie theaters just made their money. They, they generally broke even and then made their money. That's why popcorn's so fucking expensive, or like Coca Cola, because it's like they weren't making that much money off of it. Yeah, you know, when when you put it that way, dude, I think movie theater is not that bad of a business. Honestly, I don't <laughs> think it is either. Even I mean, though you go into a movie theater now and there's five people in it. Right. But well, I COVID, still think it's all right. It was before, before COVID, movie theater was a pretty pretty dope business. Y well, it's interesting because like when I, when I travel, one of the things I like to do, different countries I go to, is I go see a movie in a different country. And I went all over like Southeast Asia to different movie theaters and... Uh, Popcorn there was like two bucks, or like yeah. a Coca. You know, and I'm like, fuck, how is it so expensive? And I think it's, I think, I think they might make a lot of money in the United States because they do make it's the concessions, right? I mean, I don't know what's going on with movie theaters these days, but 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 your your guy's movie what wasn't really in movie theaters, right? It, it opened like, in like I want to say like fifteen. 
Okay. Um, and so that was cool. Like, and like, yeah. kind of like me and Machine Gun Kelly's like a market, so to say. Right, like, I'm right. from Minnesota. He's from Cleveland. So like Midwest stuff. And there was like right. an LA opening and, and stuff like that. Do you have a sense of how the movie performed financially? Not at all. Okay. Not at all. I have. Did, I, did you make I, money I, on I, it? Did, on the back end yet? No, no. Uh-uh. I haven't um, made anything on the back end of Jackass forever yet. <laughs> really? Okay, so I've got a long ways to go. <laughs> uh, so I'll be waiting. I'll hit you up in ten years and let you know. Yeah. Um, but but uh, as far as like you know, it, it's really like a, a stoner comedy, and kind of um, the hopes going into it was make like something that's more of like a cult classic you know sure. and that gets better over time sure um we were scott and i at the the movie that's where where you introduced yourself to me yeah. and told me you love the podcast we were thoroughly enjoying the movie but we're both sober nerds yeah. and and uh the little screening room that it was in like i just got so smoked out with, oh, with dude, weed that we had to i leave. know i know <laughs> we're they, we, we're so close to getting kicked out yeah we're so close to getting kicked out i was out. just like dude i can't handle like i don't i just like like i don't care if people drink alcohol around me because like that's not entering my body yep. you know like when people are smoking weed and i'm breathing it in that's like secondhand dude I, I, under I understand that now i can't i, I, I understand <laughs> that now. like yeah. i actually yeah. do as like <laughs> As like uh, from like sixteen years old until like two years ago, I was like, I can't smoke. What the fuck are you talking about? Right. Yeah, getting high. And now I'm like, okay, yeah, I do understand. Right. That. Yeah, I, mean, I, I remember. I remember we left there, and I was yeah. like, fuck, that was gnarly. And then I kind of was like. I kind of wish I was high. Like, I was like, I wish I got secondhand high off that. You know, it's like a free lapse. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know how high you would actually get. <laughs> I don't know how high you'd actually get from that, but uh, just the idea of it. And what's most upsetting to me about it is how much I love the smell of weed. How much Dude, I, I how know. much I frankly miss being able to smoke weed. Yeah. Like if I could smoke weed, I would love That's to That's the one thing I miss sure. doing. I totally, I would love to be able to smoke weed. I just know that I can't. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. whatever. I'm kind of there now too. All right. Yeah. Um, now, uh, so you got the, 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 the movie that was fun. Music's your biggest thing. Yeah. You've, uh, I saw on your Instagram, you, you've just, uh, made the leap to a larger size venue yeah and has that tour begun yet no it starts uh february 19th so in like exactly a month right now all right yeah february 19th um i think it's 27 shows about 27 shows wow yeah it's like a six-week tour um which is kind of a long one but yeah i mean dude i've been doing this since i was 16 years old like been on stage so over How are you half, now 35 all right probably 35 Every year is a trophy for me. Um, and, uh, dude, I grew up playing in punk bands, bro. Playing to literally my mom and my sister were the crowd. You know? Nice. Um, Give me some punk band bands that you love. Well, I mean, like, I was, a, I was a true pop punk kid. Okay. Like, that was my, that was my real everything when i started you know so it was Blink like 182 that's i mean blink 182 was like the gateway yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah okay so i played drums and bands like my whole life growing up and um i mean like yo like drive through records i don't know if you ever heard of drive through records but they had bands like newfound glory the okay. starting line um alistair like these real like the the real like heart of pop punk i look at it okay um so like those were those were the bands that like I really got into and that was like a gateway obviously into like the where where that comes from before that. Mm -hmm. Um but that that was my true first love was drums in bands doing that. And I played the same venues. Like I was in a band called Four Letter Lie. That was the first band I was signed in where I played drums and it was like uh kind of like a post hardcore band and like screaming and singing and okay. like double kick breakdown shit like that uh -huh. um those venues that i played in with that band that were like 500 cap i had played those venues pretty much for like 12 years straight and finally now leaping up to like 1500 cap venues and that's 1500 standing yeah yeah right yeah which is a lot yeah, it's yeah. super a it's lot. Super a lot. I mean, and I'm just like the gratitude that I have to be 35 and hitting 
like what I look at as like big inclines in my career. That's kind of the story that I like want to leave behind for any kids out there that are involved in art or just in life in general. That like life doesn't stop in your 20s. Did I tell you this guy's got a youthful view of the world or what? The guy thinks he's over the hill at age 35. It's insane. His, his message is life isn't over after your 20s. I'm thinking, dude. I'm almost 50 over here, and I'm vibrant. I'm full of life. You know why? It's because I drink water, man. It turns out water is really good for you, and this water company, Liquid Death, is really good for the world. Why? Because their infinitely recyclable tall boy cans are infinitely recyclable. It's time to bring an end to plastic, people. It's time to drink more water, throw away less plastic, and save the world, man, because... The world needs to be young, too. And get this. This company, Liquid Death, they make these just great merch items, like the severed hand collab they did with Martha Stewart. Greatest candle of all time. All of their merch is super, super fun and cool. And the Wild Ride listeners get 20% off your first apparel purchase. How about that, folks? 20% off your first apparel purchase if you go to liquiddeath.com slash Stevo. Now let's get back to it. You oh, know. wow. Okay. Well, when did it happen for you? When it was like, <laughs> was there a plateau? And you're like, what the fuck am I doing? And then it just blew up? It was kind of like a, yeah, it was like a stagnant line that was kind of just like a straight across. For where, how long? Dude, for for 10 years, you know, for real. When I, when I quit playing drums in a band i still play drums to this day on my music but when i quit playing drums in a band and started doing what i'm doing now mod son as like the solo artist um that was around the age of 21 so now being 35 so you know like that long um and there was little like peaks but it was mostly like a very slow rise there was never any like real going down where I felt like I should quit. I've never really felt like that anyway, that that it was time to quit, you know? Um, I've always, like, my favorite artist in the whole world is Bob Dylan. So, I, like, that's who I look at as someone who's, like, 80 years old still yeah. releasing albums yeah. and going on tours. So I kind of always looked at that as, like, the standard of what an artist should strive for, you know? I remember when Knoxville told us he wanted to make a fourth Jackass movie. Yeah. I was like, I, I didn't get it. I just thought, man, we are just too old for this. <laughs> then the more, the, <laughs> the more I chewed on it, I uh, I remember like responding to this whole group thread with the whole, ta uh, the whole cast on it. I, I wrote back like, dude, if we're gonna do this, we should have the, the opening sequence set to a Rolling Stones song. Oh, you know, yeah. like, yeah. But what, I, I even had one that I thought would be rad too, of course. I mean, and how do you feel about that now? The whole like oh, being I mean, too old for for dude, something. I love it. I, I like. I, I love it. Um, I, I've been terrified of it, and now like I'm what, just in uh, what way terrified? Like just just like <laughs> well, what you your body like can handle. Um, what I don't like is that um, I feel like being old in our society is a party foul. <laughs> yeah. It's party foul. Yeah. Nobody, nobody wants to think about their mortality. Nobody wants to consider that they're gonna end up dead. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to even think about they're gonna get old. And so to see an old person, it, it forces people to be reminded of their mortality and they don't like that. So people don't want to look at old people. And at my core, I am the gnarliest attention whore of all time, and all I want is for people to look at me. So the idea of becoming old, wanting people to look at you, being an attention whore, but at the same time, because you're old, you're a party foul, it's like, that's the ultimate, like, terror to me. It's such a nightmare. See, and, like, that's kind of what I was just touching on, is, like, that's such a true, like, ism of right now. And I really want to rebuild that. I want to be the part of All rebuilding right. that. I really do because I feel like, I feel like too many people think that if you haven't made it in your twenties, then you need to give up. You need to try uh, something okay. else. <clears throat> and well, I think that that I just I can't stand that. And that's why I'm so proud to say like, I am 35 years old. All you right. Know? Well, that, I, that that that's the thing in in like all the motivational books I've read. 
they said that most people, like most billionaires or millionaires, didn't hit their stride till they're like forty or fifty because they stopped trying to get pussy. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so they wasted all that energy up until 40, like trying to get laid, or like all the energy you put uh, in trying to get shit. laid is like, and then once they got married or once they settled down, like KFC, like, or who, you know, the guy who did Chrysler, Walter P. Chrysler, like all these people started blowing up in their 50s and 60s because they just put all that energy into their passion. Absolutely. I That's mean, there's epic. like, there's, there's a great story that I've always looked at too about like Jay-Z released his first album when he's 27 years old his first mm. album you know 27 like that you don't hear about that kind of stuff anymore but i've always just looked at that as such like an inspiration that life doesn't end there you know yeah yeah i'm with it i think too you got to be a little bit careful about your definition of making it yeah because like commercial success like um you know like even a profile on a on a public media level like it, it's a dangerous uh metric you know compared to just being stoked on what you do you know like if, if you're out there if you want to become famous and you're just like i just want to become famous or if you if you want to become rich i just want to become rich yeah then you're off to a, a a problematic start because all you're worried about is the the end and like so so you don't have a legitimate reason to to become famous or rich yeah but if you're just like it was so easy for me like i'm just i'm an attention whore i will do anything to get people's <laughs> attention like i started out from a place of wanting to like really deserve like the uh, a, a significant reaction from people who see what i do yeah. and so like by putting oh, you got that, it. by you putting got that it. first then you can get somewhere, but like, you just have to start out with something that you're genuinely passionate about. I've always said that it doesn't matter what you want; it only matters how fucking bad you want it. Yeah. You know, it just matters how bad you want it that you will move heavens and earth to to make it happen. And if that's the case, then if somebody's that passionate about something that they want to pursue, it is not going to occur to that person if they're in their 20s or their 30s because they're just so ultimately laser focused on that passion for what they want to do yeah like getting so, laid <laughs> yeah right <laughs> when you so you you've you've definitely maneuvered through a lot of life yeah following your passion yeah has there been times where you've just like lost passion yeah, how old for were you like how old were you when jeff tremaine called you and said like dude come to la Jeff Tremaine did not tell me to come to LA. <laughs> I was living in Florida, and uh, that's when I, when I filmed the first uh, first season and, and a bunch of the seconds, really the first two seasons of Jackass, I was in Florida. And uh, when I, I got paid for season two, it was seasons two and three combined that I, I earned 30,000 bucks. And they were giving me half of that at the beginning and I would get half of that when it was done. So after taxes, half of $30,000 was 10,000. I had a check coming for 10,000 yeah. bucks. I called up Tremaine and I was like, yo dude, I've never even heard of 10,000 bucks, dude. Like I'm gonna get this check in the mail. I'm gonna put it in the bank. And before that check even clears into my bank account, I will already be in my car driving from Florida to California. I'm oh, coming out you? there. I was 26. 26. And Tremaine said, you're not driving anywhere until you give me a list of ideas for every state between Florida and California. And if your ideas are there for something to shoot in every state, then I'll send out a crew to, to follow you. So I, I drove my car and uh, Trip Taylor mm -hmm. and... Um, Dimitri? Dimitri Dimitri rode with me in my car. Trip Taylor and like uh, you know like a crew. They filmed so a crew followed behind me in a van, and I filmed in every state. But so that's so, so awesome. So that was twenty six years old, and then when you really wanted to make it, you're probably like the decision was when you're in Albuquerque to like. I mean, big, right? I don't know, like I dropped out of college saying I'm going to become a crazy famous stuntman in 1993. So like eight nineteen. Um, yeah, and but, but this, that's why I say you got to be careful about your definition of making it because in my view, 
like uh, in, you know, say 1994, 1995, I was filming shit with my video camera that I was so stoked on. I was like, dude, people see this, they're like, they're fucking blown away. And like, and, and I'm gonna be dead but this video will still be playing. Oh yeah. So I was like, dude, already, boom, I live forever. I'm immortal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm immortal. So you were like, stoked always in the now because I, you're constantly filming yeah, shit. The goal would, wasn't to be on TV. I was like, I'm gonna get even more shit that's gonna be able to play after I'm dead so I can cheat death and live forever. Yeah. You know, so I didn't even have to like have any kind of uh, actual success to feel like I'd made it. I was just amped on what I was doing. So is there a definition do you think of making it? Does that does that cuz that's that's kind of what I've thought of the definition of. Well, I think it's there's just, like uh, is feeling like you're leaving a lot of stuff behind. Right. I mean, well, I it, guess the success is like what financially, emotionally, spiritually, I guess cho choose one, right? Yeah. So Yeah, I mean, you can't define making it. You definitely cannot. We were talking to Dan Bilzerian mm -hmm. on the podcast mm -hmm. and, and he was uh describing where he was making so much sense describing like a person's baseline. Whatever your situation is, you get used to it and it doesn't do the trick for you anymore. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. sitting there. It's like the same thing of gaining a tolerance with drugs. You right. Know? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Hundred percent. But that doesn't make sense because, like, you know, when we got there, he's like, "Yeah, I just fucked this AVN chick." It's like, dude, you think that guy would just want to be fucking forty-seven chicks a night, like, to get that thrill? Like, how are you just stoked on fucking one chick if you're Dan Bilzerian? <laughs> The craziest part was when he says, like, dude, like, if I post a chick on my Instagram, I'm fucking her. <laughs> he's like, and then, and then, and then he says, I mean, you don't post a picture standing next to another man's car. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, my God. Have you ever been to one of his parties back in the day? I've not. Have you? Yeah. Wow, dude. Yeah. Are they pretty insane? Yeah. They or is insane. it just kind of... They were insane. It's got they were insane. I mean, it was like right when I had moved out to California that I would be going to those parties and it was just like giant houses and crazy well, he, he crazy took us into his his shower it looked like a turkish bathhouse <laughs> yeah dude, I mean, was like, yeah. His, his whole he, he, dude i loved that guy man like yeah. i we, we had a blast with that guy and he had a rock wall above his pool it's like what the yeah fuck? so cool so yeah. cool everything about that dude is pretty epic <laughs> yeah. how did you link up with like dan when you first moved up because most people come to la to like make it and they're struggling like you're at dan Brazilian, dan's house i think oh my god you'll know Did who this get is there on the Kells you card? know who no you know who you know who was the the first person to take me around hollywood when i moved out here yeah. jeremy rogers jeremy rogers the skateboarder the skater. okay yeah you remember okay. jeremy rogers I, he was the young, he was super young, oh, and he was on like uh, DBS, I B. think. Jer Jeremy Rogers was on Plan B. Was he on Plan B yeah, at one yeah, point? Yeah. Wow. yeah. And he knows more oh about God. skateboarding than me. We gotta talk about <laughs> Danny Way at some point. Yeah, I have sure. Danny Way stories, dude. Cool, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. First job, yeah. I, like, you know, I, uh, I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you, what the hell is a thruple? Because it's on oh, your man. Wikipedia. Oh, is man. it okay to ask you that? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> How did you want to get into a thruple? A thruple. So ask you that for a was friend. that was uh, <laughs> that, that was like that. <laughs> see, see, I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna navigate through this one because I'm happily engaged, so I like to to keep right. it right there for sure. Um, but yeah, there was just a crazy time in my life where um, I was dating one girl who was. Um, basically dating another girl at the same time. Oh, okay. And so it existed in that kind of world. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I think that was well navigated. Well, <laughs> yeah. we can cut it out later if you don't want to talk about it. I, I will. I, I'll, I'll leave it at this. Instead of asking you what is the thruple, I will simply congratulate you on a thruple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're like, wait a minute, speaking of Danny Way, how do you get into a thruple? Yeah. <laughs> so Danny Way. So anyways, right. Super Ram. So how do, you, how do you know Danny Way? Um, so again, that was that would be through the first meeting of Danny Way would be through Shwayze. I would went on tour with Shwayze before. Do you know Cisco Adler? Nope. Or Shwayze? Okay. You remember the group Swayze? Nope. Baby, would you be my 
Corona Live. You remember yeah. that song back in the day? Yeah. I, I don't. Maybe. Like two thousand six, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah something yeah. like that. Yeah, that um, was that was a rough year for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was the year of. Uh, Do you remember two thousand six? Yeah, there's no music in the K hole. <laughs> 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 they had, like the most iconic photo of me it was like me laying on the ground in a pile of whippet containers. Oh, I'm like, ah, yes, yeah. the that most was iconic photo. Yeah. That ever. was 2006. Oh my god, that photo is so, <laughs> oh so god. insane, bro. Yeah, there's a bunch of photos from that. That might same. be the craziest <laughs> face that a human has ever made. <laughs> <laughs> that sure. photo, honestly. Yeah. Um, so I met Danny Way through them, and then I I was living in Minnesota at the time, but I came out to California. Um, something fell through, and I got to Hollywood, and. I had like linked up with Danny Way and I called him randomly. I was like, yo, I got nowhere to go. He's like, yo, come down to my house. So I came down to his house in, I think he was living in San Diego at the time. Encinitas, yeah. Was it? Okay. And he. With the pigs and the, yeah, and with the, the ramp pigs. in the front. With the pig that fucking hated me. Yeah, I I think he hates everybody. everybody. Bro, the pig <laughs> yeah. hated me. I think he had two pigs for uh -huh. some reason. Oh, I was up. so scared of that pig. Um, but dude, me and Danny Way made like two albums together. He wow. produces music. Yeah. And we like spent, I spent like probably three weeks at his house, but we made like some crazy, crazy music. And he was always like one of my idols growing up. You know, I posted yeah. him on my wall and shit like that. Um, and uh, yeah, so I just ended up like living at his house for a little bit. We still talk all the time and shit. Cool, man. Yeah, he's, he is definitely uh, one of the first like really sp spiritual people that I didn't expect to be super spiritual. Cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's uh, he's he's always been my hero. Yeah, for sure. And like we're the same age. I was riding a Danny Way skateboard when we were both fourteen. Oh my god, I love it. Yeah, dude. I love it. Um, yeah, he's a really special guy. Man. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, sorry, I was fifteen. We were fifteen. Okay. Yeah, I want to be careful about that. I was riding a Nautis <laughs> when I was fourteen. Um, all right. Well, yeah, dude, Danny's epic. Yeah. He, he signed off on me uh, being on X Y Z Clothing, which was my first sponsor. So sick. My first legit. What it was his like? Tommy ran it by him. Yeah, I mean, you don't do anything. X Y Z was Tommy and Danny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, that's killer. Yeah, I had um, some X Y Z shit. So uh, you've got the, are tickets on sale for this new tour? Yeah, tickets are on sale. They're, They're on, on sale. Yeah, .com. Yeah. And, and and how's the how are the ticket sales going? Good. 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 Touring's a whole different world right now. Like uh Right. Yeah, it's it's uh, so so basically after COVID, everyone went out onto the road and you it's still get a like tour bus. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. So you know all about that. Yeah, you couldn't get a tour bus. Yeah, and like prices for everything have gone up and everyone is still like in kind of the honeymoon period of still being on tour. So there's like a million people on tour at the same time. Right. Um but yeah it's going really well. I'm about to drop a new album in like uh on February third. So this that's is God Save the that, Teen. Yeah, God Save the Teen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. God yeah. save the teen. How I do you like travel it. around? Do you, do you do you travel on a tour bus? Yeah. Uh huh. How many people you you roll with? Uh, like probably like ten to twelve. And you, know? you guys are all on the same bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fill up all the bunks. Yeah. Mm hmm. I have a do full you, band with me, and then like crew and shit like that. Do you keep the the big room in the back? Yes. Yeah, you got to. Definitely, bro. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Bert Kreischer said that he insists on sleeping in one of the bunks because he doesn't want to. It's wanna... actually good sleep in the bunks. <laughs> yeah. It actually is, but I get cl I feel like I'm sleeping in a coffin. Oh, I know, so but like, it's <gasps> like, but it's like actually a good sleep though. It's so just like yeah. dark and confined. Yeah, Vinny exactly. sleeps in in one of the bunks. Yeah. Here, you sleep here. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> no yeah, when, nobody's, when nobody's here, he sneaks in. Yeah, here. <laughs> yeah. 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 Are, are you familiar with Vincent and yes. Karate, yes. also known as Skinny Vinny? Yes, yeah. yes. Well, well, I, I, I told him I think we've been in the same room before. I guess we never really like super met. But yeah, we have mutual friends. I know a good friend of his named Chad Tupper. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, All right. Yeah. yeah, we like Chad Tepper. Yeah, yeah. Tepper, Tepper's yeah, the homie. How can I mean, you not like Chad Tepper? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Chad yeah. Tepper loves you, dude. Yeah, dude, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, and, and you said you're engaged to be married. Yeah, engaged. And, and can you're you talk about with who? And you're yeah. engaged. To, yeah, yeah. To Avril Lavigne. Yeah. Boom! Just went right there. So you're engaged to Avril Lavigne. You know, his relationship sounds like a really good one. And any good relationship has a good bed, babe. So, 
What's going on with your bed? Is it disgusting? Is it time to get a new mattress? Are you getting the good sleep that you deserve? Well, the good news for you is that you can sleep every bit as well as I'm sleeping lately if you go to helixsleep.com slash stevo. Why is it such a guaranteed thing that you're going to get a great night's sleep with helixsleep.com? Well, because you take a little two-minute quiz and man, you might not even know what the perfect mattress is for you, but he, the people at Helix do. And get this, up to $350 off your order for the listeners of the Wild Ride podcast if you go to helixsleep.com slash Stevo. It's time to get a new mattress, man. Plus, it just comes in the mail. I mean, dude. No lugging anything around. You just plop that thing on your bed and poof, you're ready to go. It's sleep time, baby. Helix sleep. Helixsleep.com slash Devo. And again, up to $350 off your order. And you still get two free pillows plus up to $350 off your order. It's insane. Get over to helixsleep.com slash Devo on the double. And let's get back to it. Yes. It's crazy. Another man. person that I have posters on my wall. <laughs> yeah, you and me both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I saw you posted on Instagram. I think you were ice skating. Yeah. And uh, like all of a sudden, I'm like, he's ice skating, holding hands with Avril Lavigne. And I was like, that was kind of a double take. Like, huh? And then, and then, uh, and, and then it kind of was like, wow, okay, congratulations, mod. Yeah, we <laughs> met through we met through making music together. So I, uh -huh. I worked on her last album with her and a guy named John Feldman, the singer Goldfinger. Sure, love yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, dude, Feldy's got to come on here. Feldy is 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 an epic cat. Yeah, that dude. guy is. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I know him uh, for many reasons. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah he's, um, uh, yeah, yeah, he, he's a, a pillar of our community. A hundred percent, bro. Yes, he's helped me so much. Um, so I met her through making music with her, with her, which is like the purest form I would think to meet someone that you're going to be in a relationship with. Because when you're making music, there's like so much you tell, you kind of tell your whole story to someone while making the music. So you kind of go into the relationship like really not hiding anything from each other. Okay. Especially a thruple. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't talk about the thruple on the side. There's no lyrics about that. No, 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 no. We pushed that to the side. Cleared that slate. Yeah, I feel like music, if you're going to do music with, with somebody or like a movie with somebody where two people like star, they're going to probably yeah. hook up because it's such a weird fucking dynamic that yeah. they're in. Yeah. So uh, did you join avril and kells on that like insane arena tour that they just had that tour yeah i went out well I, so we try to not be apart for too long because we both yeah. go on tour and stuff um so yeah I, I went out and visited her for like two weeks three weeks on that how nuts was that tour it was crazy bro did you go see a show i did not oh it was fucking crazy i bet you would have loved it because i know you love like stadium show i know you love Motley I mean, crew so much yeah right? i mean i uh I'm just obsessed with the idea of being such a draw that you can sell out an arena. Yeah, it's pretty insane. Like, I'm I literally know. obsessed with yeah. that. And and um, like to, to an unhealthy degree, I just it's uh, I I describe what I'm doing with my touring yeah. as marching towards arenas. Yeah. Like I'm just like everything is just like how do I build on what I'm doing and grow and grow until I'm in a <laughs> arena oh you're totally gonna do it bro you're totally gonna do it like i i, I like to think so yeah and I, i've got a little bit of a game plan to get there but um but as far as going to shows and arenas um but again with the weed like i i'm not like a big concert guy yeah like i've been to like two i don't i don't know like i like i we went to that uh in buffalo we in Buffalo, we went to see One Direction. We didn't go and, and when this. Was <laughs> you know, we, set up, we met up with Josh Devine, you know, uh, beforehand. Yeah. And I mean, it's crazy, like, stadium shit. Like, that. The rivers uh, were flowing with underage beef. <laughs> <laughs> the streets turned into rivers. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. That's what it was like trying to get to that stadium. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, it, it, it and, and like to get to the status where like people are so like because they said that like people just pass out left and right during their show if they see them and it's like to get to that level it's like the Beatles level Beatles yeah. Yeah, you know yeah. I'm sure like I think they're, they got even gnarlier than the Beatles the One Direction I think so but you know whatever. it's crazy that and just the production like I love seeing someone create an environment yeah. on the stage I think that's so cool yeah 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 I mean I, what, what other bands have done stadiums because there's probably only like a handful oh. I mean Less than fifty in the world that can sell out a stadium, would you say? The the stadium and the arena are different, right? Right, stadium yeah. is more. So like, stadium the is, stadium is stadiums where a football team plays, yeah, 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 and, yeah. and arenas where a basketball team plays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, is like, that, is that safe to say that there's probably been like under thirty bands that could sell out a stadium, or way more than that? I would that. think it's more than that. Probably like a hundred though. But like, not a lot. No. In the grand scheme of no music no and especially right now some of the biggest artists aren't some of the biggest artists that that are listened to don't have that same crossover to people coming to see them mm. you know it's kind of like a the the I music mean, industry Chili peppers is, would the, mm. Yeah, they might be arena. That, they might be arena. I don't think the Chili Peppers are going to be doing a stadium. You don't think it's I think overseas is a little different. I think overseas there might be more of like a stadium kind of thing that happens. What would you consider the forum a stadium or no an arena? An arena. The forum is for right? sure an arena. Yeah. yeah, that's where the. But what about uh, SoFi? That's because I just a stadium. That's a stadium. For sure. Yeah, so like I just Drake, saw, Drake does a yeah, stadium. I just went and saw uh, My Chemical Romance and they sold out the forum. The forum every night for yeah. five nights in a row. Five nights at the forum. Yeah. Yeah. Which so that can probably <clears throat> would equal to a stadium. Yeah, which is sure. insane. Yeah. And then what about like a, a comedy? I mean, who's selling like who's selling I mean, out stadiums? Uh, Fluffy. Did Fluffy did? But is that? I mean, uh, Sebastian is he? But Bill Burr did Fenway Park. I saw that. That's a stadium. Did he sell it out? I'm sure. Well, that's, that's so a lot. Crazy. I mean, that's yeah. fucking crazy, dude. To be yeah. that much of a draw, right? To sell out to thirty thousand plus comedy, people, bro. Yeah, it's yeah. Cra it's crazy, dude. Who, who are some of your favorite uh, bands at the time at the moment? At the moment, I love this band called the 1975. Yeah, I think they're like one of the true like real bands out right now. Um, that band Turnstile. Have you listened Turnstile to Turnstile? Turnstile's sick. I, don't I feel know. like you might yeah. like them. Dude, yeah, I need to get into some new Turnstile music. Turnstile's really good. Yeah. Can I ask yeah. you this? Uh, are you familiar with Bam's uh, Eavesdroppers album? Dude, I've heard you talk about it so many times. It's so it's sick good. It's so good. I had yeah. to yeah. listen so yeah. to it. Yeah. I've heard you talk about yeah, it so we've, many we've, times, bro. We've, we've got to. Is it just online or what? No, we got. No, I don't think you can that. get it online. That's what that. So that's what the problem was. I think <laughs> I look, tried to look and find it at one point. I know, dude. It's yeah. like we were in <clears throat> Europe and we just uh, we were living on a tour bus, just me and Scott. It was yeah. this double decker tour bus. It was Justin Bieber's tour bus. The last person I was just Bieber, Justin Bieber. Dude, I still haven't been on a double decker one. He sells out stadiums, right? Justin Bieber. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. I mean, he, he had like 16 buses for his himself. That's like, so crazy. Yeah. I mean, dude, it's, it's, it's outrageous. Um, and, but I, I like to do that. Can, tell me what you think about this theory. Uh, somebody <laughs> asks me, what kind of music do I like? And I think that's a stupid question. Because with music, it's almost less about whether you like the music than whether you are familiar with the music because there's no way around it if you hear a certain song enough times then you become invested in that music that music you have associations with that music you take the 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 place you are in in your life at the time the feelings that you're having and they become bonded with that music that's why if you hear a song for the first time in many years it will literally take you back it will 100%. it will, it will oh, bring back those feelings 100%, yeah so we have associations jonestown massacre with music Whoa. right so Whoa. <laughs> the, the band so yeah. good dude have you seen dig no the movie <laughs> yeah wait With, about why? about about brian jonestown and uh and i've heard about the it. dandy warhols i heard no tell me oh dude it's like the craziest <laughs> music documentary i've ever seen it's oh, like the dandy fun. warhols and and jonestown massacre were like best friends at the start 
And then the Dandy Warhols went and signed to like a giant major label, got like David LaChapelle to do a video for them. And Jonestown Massacre stayed like super underground and they ended up hating each other. <laughs> but it's all filmed, it's all documented from when they were best friends, it's, like documented over seven years. And they like get into giant fights where dude wow. was like going outside their concerts being like the Dandy Warhol suck and all, it's crazy. I love a good documentary. <laughs> oh, it's the it's one of the best music documentaries I've ever seen. Dude, epic. Mixed with, I, I have to throw this in, have you seen Searching for Sugar Man? Ooh. Well, yes, yeah. That's the one about Rodriguez? The I, artist Rodriguez? No, 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 so we, I don't think I, I have seen I saw a that. documentary, what, what's it about? Okay, I yeah. can't, I, I, you, you have to watch it so I can't, like, because it's okay, the most, won't ruin it. it's the most crazy flip in history of music, it, but it's about an artist yes, that, I've seen it, that was regarded as, like, going to be one of the biggest artists in the world, and then he got something me. happens. Yes. Okay, now, I, I will walk back what I'm saying, what I said about, and it's not about if you like the music, because, of course, you have to like Steve, the music. I love you so much, bro. <laughs> Your fucking mind is so you awesome. Got, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta you gotta like, that. You just, like, <laughs> now, hold on. You gotta, you gotta like the music, too. But... Because of this dynamic where music, like, uh, fuse, it's, it, it's a fusion of your life experience and this art that you're consuming, you know, yeah. like, you're, you're, you, you literally, it's like music is, is, a like a floppy disk upon which you store your life experience. And, <clears throat> like, with that in mind, one of my favorite things that I aspire to do is to take an album and just listen to nothing but that album yeah. religiously yeah. on repeat on repeat for for even weeks on end and i like to do that if i go on a on an international trip so that that trip will always be bonded to that music so great and it was in europe i did this with uh with bam's eavesdroppers album mm. so it just takes me back to that trip yeah, I've done that with albums before too. <clears throat> yeah, so I, I I want when when you uh, recommended Turnstile. The, Turnstile. Nineteen seventy five. Turnstile. All right, Vinny. Vinny, like a Vinny's a tastemaker over here. <laughs> He's also a real coxman. <laughs> you wouldn't think of it. How much do you weigh, Vinny? Uh, shit, I gained twenty pounds on the road. Uh, so I'm up at two ninety. Two ninety. Yeah. How much? And, and, you, how much did you lose? And, and, but and, I lost one hundred and thirty. Wow. I didn't yeah. ask you that to make yeah. you feel bad. No, wow. no, no, for okay. sure. Yeah, no, yeah. I just like uh, it's 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 crazy that he. How did you lose one hundred thirty pounds? Um, I just I did keto really gnarly for like a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I saw myself on camera for the first time and I almost puked so I was just like I need to do something about this like, that's crazy I looked so I've bad I've been eating nothing but beef for the last like month and a half wow yeah there's this yeah, thing called the lion diet <laughs> yeah. yeah that's like super crazy and you notice a difference yeah 100% <laughs> really a lot yeah hey let me ask you um, you lived next door to the sublime drummer Yes, did you, in do Long you, Beach. Do you keep in touch with him? Does he know who you are? Does he? No, I haven't talked to him in a really long time. And it was like the original drummer of Sublime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So not like the one that, that would be known by everyone around the world. It was like the original the drummer. The garage band drummer. Yes, yes. And that was, so when I was in like 11th or 12th grade, I think it was 12th grade, I got in a lot of trouble in high school. Like my mom just couldn't take it. Like I was raised by my mom and my sister. My dad lived in Long Beach and my mom couldn't take it. So she sent me out to live in Long Beach, which was, which was like- Even worse. The worst idea she's ever <laughs> had. Like my dad was- You get in trouble in Minnesota, moved to Long Beach yes, in the 90s. and right by Cherry Park, bro. Yeah. Right by Cherry Park. So I was skating all the time. Like the Long Beach Nines there, all that. Um, but my dad's next door neighbor was the, the first person who opened up a dispensary in Long Beach. So basically I just started like trimming weed for him when I moved out there. And that became like my job. And do you think that influenced you to be a drummer? Or were you drumming before that? No, I was drumming before that. Yeah. And that's how you guys But that it out. that that made me become a giant pothead. <laughs> Definitely for at that sure. time. Yeah. Were you smoking before you started cutting for him? Yeah, 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 a little bit. But then it was like weed in Minnesota compared to weed in Long Beach, California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then it was like a giant leap, yeah. What, what kind of drugs were you doing in Minnesota? Like in high school, it was really just like, I mean, a little bit, <laughs> got a little bit into cocaine in high school, but it was really just like weed and pills. mushrooms here and there. No, never really did pills. Mm -hmm. But this was also like 2004 in Minnesota, Weed was, uh, it was it was like outlawed. 
you know yeah. it really was like it's changed so much now yeah right but it was like really looked at as like taboo at that time um so i was just like skipping school getting in a lot of trouble and my mom sure. just could not like raise me anymore yeah so she sent me to long beach and that was a turning point <clears throat> wow um i'm dying to know like that you, you do live in just like a crazy house it's a beautiful house it's not like a it's more of like a it's more of like a beach house okay. right it's like super deep um and like pretty much on the water and it's definitely beautiful but like my girl's also like really like really clean the opposite of me right. so it's like <laughs> immaculately like set up and and my perfect girl's really like clean that too what's yeah. your favorite room in the house uh, i mean our bedroom yeah yeah bedroom we have like a little back house studio that's that's rad too that i'm in a lot but what do you, you surf dude i just because now now living out in malibu i'm like forcing myself to i've never been a beach guy right like i've lived out in california now for like eight years and there's never been a moment where i was like i'm gonna go chill at the beach today you right. know like being from minnesota i'm such like into the countryside and mm -hmm. into the forest and shit like that um but i started I tried to start surfing like a year ago and like I was good like I got up like yeah. I could ride it I just couldn't carve in yet it's you tough know? dude do it's you surf I, I do and and I'm bad at it you surf well but you get up I can get up yeah I yeah mean, depending de depending on the but can you car can you go sideways and carve and yeah, shit I can, I can I can fire down the line in the pocket <laughs> that <laughs> boy, that <laughs> <a> boy. <laughs> that's where that's where I'm gonna get to but I really want to like I like yeah, really want to yeah, get into surfing <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, fire down the line you're gonna surf the river Come I am we're going up to Bend Oregon yeah to, that's uh, gonna be to so go much fun surfing. you can surf in the river yeah yeah it's, it's it's a crazy spot it's gonna be so I'm cold I'm dying to know what, how it works if like you gotta pay for a session or something it's, you'd think that yeah you would you probably have to pay for a pass in the park and yeah you know yeah, it's gonna be weird um, do you have a life changing or favorite book that you read that Ooh. yeah I'll tell you this. In my favorite book, it questions why we put into our bodies absurd substances posing as food. Think about that. I mean, I put ridiculous things in my body, like uh, Rice Krispie treats, okay, cookies, cake. Not, not good for you. Bad nutrition. But thankfully, there's AG1 from Athletic Greens. It's this powder supplement. Okay, one scoop goes into a pint of water to start my day, which makes me hydrated and it fills the gaps in my diet. Why? Because it's loaded with 75 different vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, adaptogens, and it's delicious. It's all of the nutrition that you need, one stop, convenient, comprehensive nutrition. And again, it's totally delicious. And if you go to athleticgreens.com slash Stevo, then you can get five comprehensive daily nutrition travel packs plus an entire year's supply of immune boosting vitamin D. It's the best deal going. It's the best thing for you. That's life changing. So go to athleticgreens.com slash Stevo to get this killer deal. And not only is it good for nutrition, it's good for gut health, cognitive health. It's good for everything. Babe, get on over to athleticgreens.com slash Stevo. Let's get back to it. 100% on one? the road, Jack Kerouac. Yeah. Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. I read that. I really liked it. Yeah, it cha I mean, it changed everything. Like I said, like Bob Dylan being my favorite artist, he his life was like changed by that book. So I like to like yeah. wh whoever whoever my heroes are, I like to look into like the the rabbit hole of what inspired them. Mm -hmm. So like that, and then I mean, my favorite writer is probably Charles Bukowski, as far yeah. as like the Post Office and Ham on Rye, oh, and dude. I read all of his stuff. Yeah, I was like a, I I, I like Charles Bukowski because I was like a big drunk. Yeah. I know, me, to me and too. like I like romanticized about being me like too. a fall down drunk. Yep. Yep. And like that whole and and plus when 
like ham on Ryan, the post office it was all in LA and he would bring up things in Pasadena and like, and I would be like, yeah, I was just there drinking like crazy. And Oh dude, the kinda, post office, I the, mean, the it's junkie so good. With Burroughs yeah. and then I started reading all those books. Right. Kinda, yeah. William Burroughs. Yep. yep. But yep. ham on Rye changed my life, uh, because I went from hating books to loving books. Mm. And I was like, man, like this is fantastic. And then I just started reading everything I could. Yeah, that's what on the road did for me. That's, yeah, that's what cool. on the road. And then and then I I uh like really on the road got me into writing books. I have six books out right now. You and do? yeah, wow. yeah. Where yeah. can they work? Where can we get them? If you go to modsound.com, m o d s u n dot com, and um, like self published all of them. I have a publishing company that I've done some books for other people too. Like Riff Raff, we did a wow. poetry book for him. Just pretty legendary. Yeah. Riff Raff. Yeah, Riff Raff. I follow Riff Raff on Instagram, and I'm not sure. I think he might follow me, too. Oh, I'm sure he does, dude. I'm sure Riff Raff loves you. Another person you should have on here. Yeah. That would be huh? a great conversation. That would be a killer one. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. What about you, Vinny? You have a book that changed your life? Dude, I don't read. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too busy crushing bees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, man, like, hey. time to read. <laughs> Dude, there's, there's, not a minute, there's not enough hours in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. I'm, I'm just like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? It you just baffles you, huh, Steve? I'm always conversations with God. Book yeah. one. Before that, though, would probably be Ishmael. Ishmael was a big one. What about growing up as a kid? Um, Call of the Wild. Um, I liked My Side of the Mountain. Yeah. I had this like uh, crazy fantasy of running away from home and living off the <laughs> land. <laughs> so My Side of the Mountain was a big one. I remember in grade school, they read books. To, where the red fern grows. Yeah, where the red they read where the fifth red grade. fern grows to us. Fifth grade sounds about right. What is conversations with God? I've heard you talk about that. Dude, before. it's epic. Neil epic. Donald Walsh. Yeah. Neil Donald Walsh, who we have reached out to to have on this podcast. Yeah, he's in Ashland. Yeah. Um it, it's a guy who um published this book that was on the New York Times bestseller list for a record almost three years. Wow. So, like, there's something to it, but it, what it is, he had a, like, a, a debilitating accident. He, he, he lost his job. <clears throat> he couldn't, like, provide for his family. He was just in a place of, like, severe frustration and strife. And he, and he had a habit of writing letters to people that he would never necessarily send. But this was how he processed things he was going through. Yeah. And he was in such a state one day, and he just thought, ah, you know what, like, screw it, I'm going to write a letter to God. And, and he just, like, to vent his frustrations, and he just wrote, God, like, and then, you know, why this is my life so difficult? Like, why is, you know, like, all this stuff? And the story is that as he wrote this he intuitively got a response which was do you really want questions to these or do you do you really want answers to these questions or are you just venting and so he Jeez. wrote down these these answers that he was intuitively getting and that became this this dialogue so it's it's a dialogue between him and god and he writes writes it all down and it's like a, a kind of a tough pill to swallow and a lot of people would call it blasphemy yeah to suggest that this guy is you know writing the words of god but as difficult as that is keep in mind this book was on the new york times bestseller list for almost three years yeah i think it was like 140 weeks or something wow like, it's a record i believe and it absolutely changed my life. It fundamentally changed the way I view the universe. And mm -hmm. I say it all the time, and I love it. And it was a trilogy, book one, two, and three. I'll tell you, and, check it out. So book one is about, like, uh, the, for the individual. Like, book two is uh, for, like, humanity, maybe, or whatever. And then book three is, like, the whole. Well, we saw him, and uh, he was writing book number four. He did. He, he was promoting book number four. Yeah. I mean, the guy's put like 20 books out now. <laughs> yeah, 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 put 20 books out. There's but like... the, the cool thing is uh, like an audio version. Yeah. Because on the, on the, uh, on book one, on the audio, or I guess on both of them, God's voice switches from a man to a woman, like just randomly throughout. Oh, it's, that's it's, cool. It's super cool. Wow. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I'm going to check that out. It's, it's, it's epic. It's super epic. 
Yeah, dude, what, what else do we want to talk about, man? You guys have been killer. Vinny's doing a great job on the Vinny, podcast. Vinny, you have anything to... All right, so Tepper, <laughs> te- all right, Tepper was telling me a story about uh, when Z- the first time Zach ass met you. Yeah. And uh, you, you guys were pranking Zach because... What did we uh, do? You're like, Zach, don't look mod son in the eyes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like, Zach, like, accidentally looked you in the eyes and you just started freaking out. Oh, yeah. I committed to the bit yeah, completely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which was really hard for me to do. <laughs> I really don't do shit like that with people. And I was just like, I freaked out on him. I yeah. remember that. That was the first time I met him. Yeah. Zach ass is awesome, bro. Where, where yeah, was Zach's that? a shit. I think it was at my house. Yeah. I think it was at my house. Chad Tepper was living <laughs> with me for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny as Yeah, fuck, I talked to Tepper bro. today. He's like, bring up that story. <laughs> yeah. Nice. You guys put that on Instagram or something, right? I don't know if they did. Yeah, no. I, don't, I don't think so. Zach has been killing it, man. Yeah. It's so fun to see. Yeah. It's great what you guys did with everyone, bringing all the new kids in and shit. Well, thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we amazing. should all meet up in Malibu and surf. Bro, please. <laughs> please come hang out with me in Malibu. Dude, yeah. I need friends out there. <laughs> I definitely do. Yeah, it's yeah, a... <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to uh, get my exercise game on. I got to get my exercise game on, I was game on uh, too. just up. I'm back on it. I was just up in the hills above Wait, the I thought it was a, a leaf chainsaw. blower. It's, le- it's a legit chainsaw, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. Yeah. How the noise level? Are you going to turn it on? <laughs> oh, sorry, Wendy. I didn't mean to do that. Get <laughs> that thing away from me, man. You like accidentally hit my ankle. Dude, it would not be right if I came on here and you yeah. didn't turn a chainsaw on yeah, and dude. have a machete. Yeah, dude. Like uh What what were you doing? I was clearing Juggling the, them? The hiking trail. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> sorry, Wendy, good girl. Um the 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 trail had the the cacti. The 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 same cacti that Zach ass rode the skateboard down and he went into the that's back there it, yeah it's a, it's the, the cacti like was grown all into the path so it's like hard to hike all the way up to the Hollywood sign yeah without um, getting thorns in you yeah so I was clearing away the and dude every time I go up there it reminds me that the gnarliest stunt ever was <laughs> Zach ass going into those cacti bro you that's, consider that the gnarliest one ever I mean, dude. That's a heavy statement. You said would it you was do stuck. I mean, you said it was I stuck it? for a while. Okay. I, yeah, in, in that same position, yeah, I would have done so it. So you want to recreate? Fire Angels. <laughs> <laughs> fire, maybe Fire Angels ended up being gnarlier. It ended up being gnarlier, but like the anticipation would yeah. be probably the cactus stunt because you I know mean, it's going to yeah. suck. It's a tall statement to say it's the gnarliest stunt ever, but dude, that... It was, going, dude, it's heavy. Going into those cactus, yeah. dude. Dude. Yeah, Happy. you said it was stuck, and you were trying to. And get, then like, he was like trying to, to get wax out. it out or something, <laughs> yeah. wasn't that? Well, dude, was, he was trying to get out of it, and like he was like putting his hand down on other cactuses to get uh, out, and he put it. <laughs> so he's like, ah, like every movement he would yeah. make to instinctively to get out of the situation, he would just keep fucking. Dude, it was gnarly, dude. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take you up there, man. It's epic. Oh yeah, I gotta it, see it. it too. It's super. What size shoe are you? Like nine. Oh, you're a nine, nine and a half, ten. Nine and a half. Okay, sick, yeah. dude. That like uh, that's that's same as me. Yeah. I, you wouldn't you wouldn't do too well trying to get up there in those combat boots. Oh, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. We'll be <laughs> yeah. good. Sick. And then like you know we get up there, you can take a, an epic photo with the Hollywood sign. It's right there. I mean, yeah, it's like kind of in the background, but but yeah, it's just, it's sick. So you do you like living over here in this area? Love it. Yeah. Love it. Plus, this hike is like the best thing about the whole deal yeah there's a little secret at the top yeah (laughs) uh speaking of shoes yeah oh well do you want to do that or you want to do i'm gonna gonna include that in the same um, all right well speaking of shoes on my part i'm gonna give away another pair of shoes Okay, we might as well announce that nobody did anything impressive to earn your Nike Air Jordans. I know, dude. So many kooks <laughs> oh, just DMing me. I remember me. you saying that. Nobody, it, it, I, I said it in a creative way, and people were reaching out to me on LinkedIn. People would DM my brother. People would DM Knoxville. I mean, there's nothing creative about it. So, uh, so, so, so I asked Scott, like, who, who's, who won? Like, what was the raddest thing? And Scott says, nobody did anything even remotely creative. So I thought to myself, what would I do? If I wanted to win the shoes, and I was like, oh, well, I would, like, get, like, a, you know, a green sheet and, and uh, 
you know, like climb, like like I would make it with the green screen that I was climbing out of the shoe, and then I would edit, you know, in the editing, I'd make myself become a big giant and then pick up the shoe and 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 say thanks, Scott Randolph, for the. Yeah, you know, like and so I did it like super easy. And yeah, I, I did and the video was rad too. I did it in literally one take. <laughs> and, yeah. you out, and you also brought out a guy to help film. That, that, then I that, that Lux called me out. She said that uh, that it wasn't fair because I was using sophisticated editing and green, <laughs> and green screens. And then not so you won. Not everybody has access to that. So I tried to do another version where uh, there was no green screen. It was just a depth perception thing yeah. where I climbed up the shoe and then jumped into it. And I did it, but it was lame. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then okay, so then you won because you actually I did won. it. I won. And so, so people I made... would say it's rigged, but it's not. You actually did the video and I gave oh, him dude, you. I, I blew it out. I won by a mile. There's, there's and you gave him the shoes? So I gave Steve so the so shoes. I'm the, <laughs> so, I'm the current owner of the shoes, but, but I don't want them. <laughs> why don't you want them? <laughs> because I'm, a, I'm an animal guy and they're made out of leather. So what are you gonna do with them? I'm gonna uh, ma I'm gonna post a, a video with showing what I did to win the shoes, and now that uh, they're mine, I'm gonna invite people to win the shoes from me, without harassing all of our associates and loved ones with, with un unsolicited messages. Like uh, that would turned into a nightmare. You were you like, did. get a hold of me. <laughs> Everybody you know, everybody I know. Knoxville screenshotting like, hey, this fucking guy message. Oh my god, oh my god, I'm so sorry, Knoxville dude. About <laughs> it. Like everybody's, everybody's bugging everybody about it. I don't want anybody reaching out to anybody else. Mm. Just do your creative thing and tag me. Yeah, there you go. I, and, and I would and tag even... me, and I, you know, I go through my Instagram tags. You know, I, I see all that. And, and and while we're while we're in the spirit of giving things away, I have some Kyrie Irvings that I don't want. <laughs> Kyrie, you, what's that? Am I saying that right? Kyrie Irving, yeah. So Kyrie, yeah. are they Nikes? Yes. Okay, so I have Nike Kyrie yes. Irvings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like the floral print. And where did you get those? <laughs> I'm a shoe head, dude. <laughs> I'm a sneaker head or a shoe head? Yeah, you're a sneaker head. Sneaker head. There you go. So I'm a sneaker head now. <laughs> and the way to win this one, it's really near and dear to my heart. If you go to walmart.com and buy Stevo's hot sauce for your butthole and screenshot <laughs> the proof of purchase with a five star review, you might have a chance to win. Wow. But like you it. can't get a hold of me on social media because I'm off. So go ahead and tag Steve in it, yeah, and Steve too. will pick the winner. I, I, I'll say this: any tag or any post I see that shows a five star review for a, a proven purchase of hot sauce for a butthole, I will double tap that. I mean, I double tap everything that I see, especially on Walmart.com because that's gonna be big. I mean, anytime somebody buys merch from Stevo.com and posts anything with it, like not, without fail, I always double tap that. Okay. Problem is that people don't understand that I don't see it if they just put my handle in the in the mm, caption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to actually tag. Yeah. B because uh, the volume of of stuff, like I just I don't see the. You got to tag. I see everything that I'm tagged in properly. All right. And then how do people go get tickets to the Mod Sun tour? That's modsun.com. Oh. Uh, and and <laughs> steve.com. We're going to have we're going to add a little link there as well. Um, yeah, <laughs> modsun.com. M O D S U N. Mod Sun stands for Movement on Dream Stand Under None. So yeah, M O D S U N.com. Wow. Movement on Dream Stand Under None. Yeah. I like that, dude. Yeah. Killer man, I like it. fucking dude. Man. Thanks for being a fan see, of the podcast. See, I, I I am a fan of the podcast, and just just uh, I do I do have a question whether okay. you, whether you leave this in or not. But like, so I'm three years, eight months, seven days sober without drinking or drugs. Um, no, no weed. So that's been about like a year and a half. Okay. Wow. Weed. Congrats, um, dude. So like it's to to me, you know, it just it really seems to be getting more difficult. Okay. Right. And um was there did did you go through that similar around this time? Um and is there just like I am a big fan of the 12 step process. Right. And I think that it, that it's demonstrable mm -hmm. the you know 
validity of it because millions and millions of people have come before us yeah. and uh you know basically the the proof is in that yeah you know like, like there, there's a book which outlines the 12 step process right. and it nobody's ever tried to rewrite it nobody you know like there's just one book since 1939 yeah. and then you know the, the consensus is they got it right and the people who uh, follow that book so it the book outlines the 12 step process and the the point at which i believe the obsession to drink alcohol and take drugs is lifted comes when one completes a thorough fifth step mm -hmm. i think that that like uh just going by that you know like mm -hmm. that step four is where you make an inventory of everything that that uh upsets you and and like it's pretty incredible the way everything that upsets you falls into three categories there's resentment you know if you're like just pissed off at somebody then that that's upsetting there's fear and there's guilt mm -hmm. so and so the the inventory process well harm is done to others that that brings guilt you feel guilty because you harm okay. somebody Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so you make a, a, a list of everything that you can think of that you feel resentful about. You make a list of everything you can think of that you feel fearful about. You make a list of everything you can think of that you feel guilty about. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you, you know, you take these lists. That's step four. You take these lists to somebody and you talk through it all with them. Okay. Get it all off your chest. And the idea is that you break down what your part is in the resentment. You, you break down what like appropriate indicated action you can do to address your fears. And in this process, you, you really dismantle everything that screws you up. You, you 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 take the power out of everything that upsets you, yeah. and once you've once you've done that, like you don't like that the edge is taken out. The, like everything that you're using the drugs and alcohol to soothe, is soothed. Yeah. So so <laughs> you know? yeah, I think the difference is that like if you haven't done that and you're yeah. not drinking or doing drugs you're like what they say is like white knuckling, white -knuckling. it, mm -hmm. yeah. and so it's like that stuff's still inside of you. You're just not covering it up anymore, so it probably will get harder. Yeah. And it's just maybe eating you alive. And then when you do take the power to that, or like when you let go of like a secret and like telling somebody, that takes a lot of the power out of it too. And then for me, when I did that, like my life got better and better. It, but up until that point, and I was sober, it's just like, it's like I had an infection inside of me and I wasn't taking, uh, I wasn't numbing out to mm -hmm. like, to, to be distracted by it. Like I was finally not doing drugs and then like the infection was like, oh fuck, it's like painful inside. Yeah. It just kept getting more painful and painful. And I think the steps is like cutting you open, doing the work is like, you know, having a doctor kind of clean you out and stitch you back up. Mm -hmm. You're I've getting people, the infection out. I've heard people say... I never suffered from alcoholism until I got sober. Yeah. Huh. Right. And that's yeah. like, uh, because, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because the, the, the drinking alcohol and taking drugs is not the disease. Mm -hmm. That is, if anything, a remedy for yeah. the disease. Yeah. yeah. That's a yeah. symptom of the disease. The disease is centered in our mind and the characteristics of the disease are uh, restless irritability discontent like we're just plain uncomfortable in our own skin and we need to to soothe that discomfort so yeah. we cover it up with drugs and alcohol you take away the drugs and alcohol you still have the disease so you got to do something to to address that discomfort to dismantle the the ills of the disease and that's where the inventory process comes you literally do an inventory of everything that makes you uncomfortable mm. and it's the it's the raddest thing it is it's super rad was the fourth really difficult for you oh my god i i got the fourth step blues and landed up in a psych ward oh really <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah after you wrote it or before oh, or during with, uh, I, I was in i went back and forth between steps four and five mm -hmm. You know, I would write out a bunch. I would go and, and talk through it. I'd go back and write more. I'd go back and yeah. talk through now, it. Now, were you, uh, for the fourth, were you going back 
as far as you could, like yeah, of course. as long as you could yeah, remember. Of yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. Of course. Well, no, because at first I was just like, dude, I was fucking eight years old. That's where, that. but that's where like some of the, you know, what do they, what do they say? If it's hysterical, it's historical. Mm. So it's like yeah, it comes yeah, from yeah. somewhere for sure. But yeah, every time I would go, I would go to my sponsor to do, to do the fifth and. And he would be like, "No, nope, like you need to go. You need more. You need to go back further." Mm. Yeah, because like, the more the more data that you can crunch, yeah. the more effective the process is. Yeah, like you get out of it what you put in. So yeah. if you like really thoroughly put everything that's ever bothered you into it. Yeah. And what's crazy about doing the this this process is that as you get into it, as you break down all of the these things on your inventory patterns emerge mm -hmm. and you realize oh my god like i always trip myself up by doing this so you identify patterns you identify behaviors which don't serve you and you can they call it uncover discover discard mm. and you just kind of let go but yeah. the problem i had and why i wound up in the psych ward for the second time with three months of sobriety i um had in my you know in my inventory i just put down like i i was i was looking at things that i had done that i that i just felt like a terrible person for having done but in my my harm done others inventory mm -hmm. the things i felt guilty about and i just arrived at the conclusion that i was a terrible person and did not deserve forgiveness and that the only thing that was going to work was i had to kill myself fuck <laughs> yeah and yeah. uh and, and and i was at a you know one of our meetings and I'd shared that I said all of the work I'm putting into my steps I feel like I'm just getting out self-hatred I just feel like I hate myself I can't forgive myself and I just want to blow my brains out now how and long did that how many feeling months in yeah we're... yeah I was three months sober at that time but yeah. how long did that feeling last that self-hatred from doing that um well I I, I the that meeting took place on a hospital grounds that had a psych ward on those so they the, the good people of the group just they Lovingly walked me across the grounds to the psych ward where I checked myself. You said you to kill yourself? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And, and, and I was with it. I was like, hey, I need to be in here. Yeah. So I checked myself into that psych ward. They're like pill boys back. <laughs> <laughs> while I was in that psych ward, and I couldn't get out for like three weeks, but while I was in there, I was reading that same book, which is, uh, you know, which outlines the 12 steps. And um, there's a chapter in that book, um, which I was, I was reading it, and uh, it says that the, the history of every alcoholic is plagued with specters of, you know, specter, th the things, every alcoholic has a history of, uh, of, of things that they're, they've done that are humiliating, tragic, you know, like sad, even like, like funny, you know, but like, but like the, 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 the sum total of any alcoholic's past like it's comprised of a lot of stuff that that you would think you gotta like it says one would think that the past of an alcoholic that that f for f that future happiness was dependent upon forgetfulness of the past like you can never be you'd be so ashamed of what you've done in your past that you can never be happy in your future mm -hmm. unless you're able to swipe it all under the rug, <clears throat> load it up into the closet, mm -hmm. throw away the key, and never think about it ever again if you're going to be happy after you've done all that crap. It says, but our, and it says, but our history shows the exact opposite. That, in fact, the, the tragic, humiliating, you know, like upsetting past of the alcoholic is actually the, like, uh, the, the, one of the greatest, if not the absolute greatest asset to the alcoholic, because having overcome that terrible past, yeah. now mm -hmm. the alcoholic is equipped to help other people overcome their own past by rising above it, moving forward, moving past it. Now we can, we can help others do the same. That's why the, the, the book says, uh, no matter how far down the scale we have gone, well, like, uh, that we'll see how our past can be useful to others. So in that reading of that, I was reading that book, I'm in the psych ward, I just think I'm a terrible, it, it just kind of clicked for me, like, oh, maybe, like, all this awful crap that I did, which I feel so 
just terrible about and I feel like I can't forgive myself. Maybe the answer isn't to kill myself. Maybe the answer is to just stop being that terrible person. Like that's what the inventory process is for is yeah. uncover, discover, discard. Like maybe I just let go of that. That's the whole point. Yeah. Don't, don't dwell on like how ashamed I am, but just stop being that, stop doing that. And so when I got out of that psych ward, I checked myself back into rehab again. I started over from scratch and and I just took the the position that I don't want to be that guy anymore. Mm. And and that then I I shifted my my motivation, my perspective. And ever since then it's just, and, and really that that same shame of being, of all that crap I did became the fire under my ass to mm. to stay sober for the right reasons. What are you thinking about when he says that? That it's just like a great example for me to know. I mean, first off, that like I didn't do the steps. I haven't done the steps. So like, first off, I think that that's like the real big move that I need to do. The second is that like you seem to have this idea that see, like my my biggest cons my biggest thing that keeps fucking with my head is that. I'm at the point now where it's almost like the there was like a high from getting sober and proving to myself that I could do that. And it seems like that's somehow running low. And now I feel like I'm like was more interesting or more fun or something being fucked up. And I know I know that's wrong. Uh -huh. I know that's wrong. And I can say it out loud. It's just about I need to convince myself. And I just look at what you're saying with like you have this real passion behind you that like, I mean, you've lived one of the craziest lives of anyone I've ever known. Yeah, that part was easy for me because looking at my professional career before I got sober, like I, I put a lot of work into developing a skill set that I could utilize for, you know, the the style of entertainment that you know that that I became known for. Yeah. I put a lot of effort into it. There was like some, some legitimate skill behind it. There was a lot of creativity. There was like there was it wasn't just dumb, you know, there was some, there was there was work and there was creativity. And it gradually as I got worse on with drugs and alcohol, it devolved. And by the end I I mean I was just look how wasted I am like oh and it was like Steve-O peed on this you know yeah. like it was just where could I be inappropriate pull out my wiener pee on something mm -hmm. like a peed Steve-O peed on a red carpet you know like yeah. Steve-O smoked pot here like there was just like it, 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 smoked it on an airplane right <laughs> smoked on an airplane it, be, it just became kind of pathetic that like the, like gone was the real creativity gone was the like the the effort like the i just became a sad pathetic guy you know and um it is scary to get sober but i mean i'm way i i've demonstrated like many times over to like to the power of the nth degree that I'm far more creative for sure and fun yeah. in sobriety than I was particularly at the end of my run with drugs and alcohol. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, I mean, I would submit to you that if you feel like you're going to be more fun, creative, interesting on drugs and alcohol, I mean, in, in our literature, it says, head on over to the nearest bar room and see what happens. Mm -hmm. You know, like, um, I have, I have trouble believing that that uh, there's going to be any. Yeah, because if I think about drinking, I'm not thinking about like drinking. I'm thinking about getting fucked up. And like I was talking with my therapist and I said, man, dude, like I just wish I could be normal and drink like a six pack of beer a night and chill. Mm -hmm. She's like, it's funny <laughs> that like you think that's normal. And I was like, it's mm -hmm. not. And she's like, that's your thinking. Like mm -hmm. I like. I want, I fantasize about getting, I don't fantasize about enjoying the hit of weed. And it's like, I just fantasize about being fucking blazed on the beach all day. Like, mm -hmm. that's what I think about, 
you know yeah. it's not enjoyable yeah. i think about the most extreme of like that's crawling true. and being a fall down drunk yeah let you know and like I, falling asleep in a dumpster yeah i like it yeah i, I it's want to romanticize yeah. like we were talking about like bukowski and all yeah. that you know i want to be so like crazy on drugs that i haven't slept for three days and that like people <laughs> yeah. are walking around who aren't actually there yeah you don't want to you, don't <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you want to be up for yeah. the, you think yeah. about the fifth day how fun that would be yeah. you know it's like yeah so the thinking's and, off yeah right and the other thing too that like uh people who are not alcoholic never wonder if they're alcoholic you know like yeah i'm not sure but you know that's well no like, <laughs> it's like you know how somebody's an alcoholic if it's like my sister's a normie and if i was like dude when's the last time you drank she's like i don't know like four months ago yeah i'm like hey mod when's the last time you drank you're like three years There's seven so. days six hours and 14 <laughs> minutes exactly it's obsession you know yeah exactly bro exactly yeah so i mean i don't know i mean like the other thing too and this is, I say this a lot, that in my view, the worst situation to be in <clears throat> is to kind of be alcoholic. Yeah. You have alcoholism, but not too bad. Yeah. Because in that situation, there's no like black and white definite like need to address it. And because there's not that, it's not that bad, it, it can go on. And, and it does go on because it's not that bad. So it just, it, you never do anything about it. And like you're, it, it, it's just bad enough to slow you down, to compromise your ability to accomplish your goals. You're you talking know, about to, like the functioning addict. Yeah. Like yeah. eating just, soup with a fork. It's just, <laughs> it's yeah. just bad enough to interfere with your relationships, yeah. to make you not me realize your potential. Yeah. You know, but not bad enough that it's got to stop so it continues and and you know it years slip through your fingers and then the years turn into decades and next thing you know you're you're like old and you think yeah. damn i blew it yeah as opposed to if you have alcoholism so dramatically badly that it has to be addressed and yeah. that was the boat i landed in very yeah. lucky to land in that boat because i was 33 wow. years old and i had to do something about it yeah now i'm coming up on 15 years of not being impeded by drugs and alcohol God you know and by like you know for 15 years i've largely been able to focus my energy and my ability on what i want to do now of course to scott's point that like chasing pussy around it like really impedes one's ability to accomplish their goals but then i addressed that too and now i've got i've got this great relationship with my girl and like there's no distraction. So I'm like a laser, just like, you know, yeah. like laser focused and nothing's in my way wasting my time or, and so like to me, that's the, yeah. the ultimate. P people like when, when they talk about, you know, he heaven, hell or like purgatory, like the in between, like my definition of hell would be being high as fuck with another person that's high as fuck talking about like dreams like you know i can't mm. wait to do this like that would be my definition of hell oh, dude i was in that hell there, for a decade it's like, okay dude like <laughs> yeah we're gonna do this we'll do that and then it's like or being 50 or 60 talking about the glory days you know it's like right huh. now in my life it's it, it's full and there's goals and there's things to yeah. look forward to on a daily basis like that's why i got sober i i i one of the things I talk about is I tried really, really fucking hard to travel the world w w when I was getting fucked up. And like, I maybe did like 10 countries, you yeah. know, and I was like broke and I was just kind of like, I'd be in Germany sleeping on the floor, you know, in, on a park bench with a newspaper over me or like just fucking staying at a shitty hostel and trying to work for two weeks to, you know, in Ireland, whatever. And then when I got sober, uh, and we, fuck, we've been to like 40 countries together. You know, it's just kind of like <laughs> things just happen so easily where it's like I, I, I have, it's like, it's not like when I try my hardest to do something when I'm fucked up and I'm in the wrong state of mind, like I said, eating soup with a fork. It's like you're just working so hard to fucking not get full. And then once you kind of like just give up and be like, all right, fuck it, I surrender, shit just pops off pops yeah. off yeah <laughs> you know, so. yeah so 
we're big fans of sobriety. <laughs> I mean, my whole life changed when when yeah. when I changed. It yeah, really dude. did. Yeah. And then you met the one. Yeah. Well, and, that that a hundred percent that, and then I mean, just everything in my life. I mean, just my mom being like, I look at you and I feel like I have my son back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Was That's was epic. was yeah. like a, a big thing, but there was just such a and this is what i need hearing all this is so great because like i said and it's probably i mean you guys could tell me it's probably the wrong way to think about it is that like there was so much um like like i said like a high attached to the fact of proving to myself that i could do it um whereas pink cloud th that's yeah so that and yeah that's i gotta I, be done with that right and and just realize that that it's more to it than just the proving right. to myself. Here's the thing, and I think this is probably the most important. I feel broken like at this point right now with just right. like not knowing here, here, how to move forward. Like everything felt like I was moving forward at such a great rate, and I just like don't want to okay. end that. Um, whether one is an alcoholic or not, take take that completely aside, and we're not talking about addiction on any level we're just talking about being a human being okay i think that most people's biggest problem is that they have not identified the thing that they are just ultimately passionate about mm -hmm. because it is impossible to hit a bullseye if you are not aiming at a target mm -hmm. and a lot of people just don't have what, the, what they, they don't have a purpose they don't have that thing that they want to do and so without identifying a goal, it's impossible to accomplish a goal. So people are just kind of wandering through life without like a goal. And that's the biggest problem, I think. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you gotta identify what it is that you're passionate about. And then life takes on this, this, uh, this magical purpose and this opportunity to be fulfilled that otherwise you, you can't have. So for you, I, I hear you saying that that uh, you know life is like, you know the the high of proving to myself that I could live without drugs and alcohol is kind of wearing off and now I'm wondering am I more more interesting if I pick up drugs and alcohol again and I would say that probably number one you wouldn't be thinking that if uh, if there wasn't some danger there. Mm -hmm. And number two, I think you could eradicate that entire line of of thought by just like recommitting yourself to identifying your purpose. Yeah. You know, like if you if you just sit down, if you just ask yourself, yeah, I'm getting ready to go on this epic tour. Got a new album coming out. Like what where is the void coming from you know like are you concerned that that now that you've got this album out like that 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 now you need creative juices to start writing the next album and so you're insecure about that and it's making you question your sobriety like you know like get to the root of what the concerns are yeah the why and just keep yeah. asking why yeah and i mean lean into it yeah i would say you know and and if uh if you feel like you you've got more experimenting to do that, that you need to go out there and, and and get loaded smoke a joint you know like whatever it is just uh be careful maybe not even be careful but just be be ready to identify like a, a just a loop of of counterproductive yeah. shit, you know? Groundhog's Day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of Loserville. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, maybe you're, maybe you're not an alcoholic. Maybe you're not. You know, there's only one way to find out, and that's just crash and burn. But, yeah. like, but my, my concern would be the only having alcoholism a little bit, so it just goes on forever and just slows you down and just makes your life less than completely fucking awesome. Yeah. So ask yourself what what is your vision for your life to be the maximum completely fucking awesome that it can be mm -hmm. and then draw your roadmap to that being your reality and let nothing fucking interfere with the the fucking 
mission to make it down that path and be that awesomeness. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think they're getting fucking stoned and fucked up like even like as part of that path. No, dude, it's not. It's not. <laughs> and I I mean I, I I got I cleaned up completely because of almost dying from an overdose. There you, you know? go. I'm like so I know where it leads me. I was know. it was it just one overdose that that did mm -hmm. it for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you were like oh, I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. yeah. With, with yeah. drugs. See, it wasn't cocaine. That that okay. wasn't for me. Man, that's a scary overdose. And, and, and okay. yeah, I mean, it was it was a like seven day bender, mixed with you know, a couple other things along the way. But yeah, so uh, people had to have been walking around at that point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. even though we're not yes. there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> cool, man. Well, dude, we'll, we'll leave it with that, dude. Like, ask yourself, what's the fucking awesomest version of my life that I can possibly make real, and uh, and. Let that be the the north star that that guides your next steps. Dude, thank you. Yeah, thank All right, you. man. Thank you, dog. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was great. Whew. Really appreciate it. Hell yeah, for sure. Did I tell you that last half an hour was wild or what, man? It's the most we've gotten really into it about uh, addiction and recovery, maybe ever. And uh, after that, Mod Son and I went hiking, playing with the chainsaw. It's just a blast. I'm rooting for that guy. I love that kid. And uh, hey, man, I love you too. The people who stick around to the end of the podcast, my beloved street team, please do give Mod Son some love. And love yourself and each other too. Yeah. <laughs>